Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Renuka Thakur, from, founder of Global Sustainable Futures, Progress to Partnership Network. I'm also a CEO of Global Sustainable Futures Network, CIC. I'm based in UK, and I'm very pleased to be presenting with you this Communities Carbon Calculator project. I also thank Nazir, uh, who has invited me to speak on this uh, platform. And I also uh, th very thankful to the university and others who are playing a big role in this workshop and coming projects. So I'm very pleased to present you my uh, presentation today. And uh, that will be followed by Liz Bowles, CEO of Farm Carbon Calculator, and she will explain more on this as well. So thank you for listening to me and I will share my screen now. So I have already introduced me uh, myself and now I want to explain you a little bit about what is GSFN, that is Global Sustainable Futures Network. And so it is all about building for sustainable futures. And I would like to play a small video which would explain the vision and uh, our objectives. Despite very significant development gains globally, which has raised many millions of people out of absolute poverty, there is substantial evidence that inequality between the world's richest and poorest countries is widening. Today the world has become more complex and poorer countries have experienced significant economic and social development. However, the inequalities within countries have also been growing and some commentators now talk of a global north and global south referring respectively to richer and poorer com communities which are found within and between countries. There are many causes of these inequalities including the availability of natural resources different levels of health and education, the nature of country's economy and its industrial sectors, international trading policies and access to markets, how countries are governed and international relationships between countries, conflict within and between countries and a country's vulnerability to natural hazards and climate change. So most importantly, researchers are called upon to address the barriers to climate science in the Global South. These culturally diverse nations of Global South are united by common threats to their sustainable futures. Challenges faced in creating collaborations, partnerships across national borders and academic disciplines. Through Global Sustainable Futures Progress Through Partnership Network, we want to play a leading role in creating an inclusive, collaborative, innovative and engaging platform for early career researchers and like-targeted stakeholders, including startups and entrepreneurs supported by experienced senior researchers and business leaders where everyone can share in their research, innovation, visualization and enthusiasm in parallel to network success. Our fundamental objective is to create a strong research environment building to a multidisciplinary and multi-sectoral team of endogenous professionals that would be capable of pursuing and utilizing participatory and integrative approaches in solving public and environmental sustainability problems. 
Therefore, our priorities are empowering and capacity building, working with researchers to empower communities and individuals, increase independence and support to those who need it, give researchers and stakeholders the legacy of sustainable, sustainable practices, fair and inclusive, improve economic and social and environmental equality, pursuing development which offers fair distribution and access to good quality life and working conditions. Networking and engagement provide an innovative and global wide platform to make global sustainable futures progress through partnership network, an effective and well connected network transforming traditional society systems to more sustainable systems. And above all, it is sustainability. So co-create sustainable and resilient development pathways to secure sustainable futures for all and everyone. So the key focus is mobilization and engagement, building a community of practice, creating a strong leadership and producing a critical mass of good practices. 800 coordinators from 105 countries have joined me. So I also call upon you to join us and co-create sustainable futures together. I'll start my presentation again. Okay, so the video was recorded uh, just after six months of this initiative when we started. So now today we have grown up to 7,000 coordinators around the world in 165 countries. And I'm proud that through these coordinators, we include universities, organizations, and big networks as well. And so we are able to reach 1.5 million people at a time. So we are very proud to uh, be a part of this big initiative where uh, Nasir has initiated as well. So now uh, we have introduced a unique way to motivate and accredited people. Whoever joins CF GSFN, we provide them a chairship, a chair badge, with unique six elements. And here I have stated the ones which are highlighted in blue are these six elements. One is SDG number. So we would like to understand that uh, which SDG number is the driver for you. Then second, uh, we have this research, which I have written research, but we have four domains, which is education, research, community, and enterprise. And so you can put your activities in one of those. Then we have level, which is here for me is global, but you can have country level, university level, sectoral level, tribal level, indigenous level, or any level that you are more focused on, your activities are focused on. And then you can have these three uh, words of your activities that would describe your activities. And with these six elements, you become a unique chair in the world. And we don't ask for anything extra. We only ask you to continue your work and uh, disseminate this for the, to, in, to be impactful for the society. And then at the end of the year, we uh, um, circulate a self-nomination form and people fill it and they, um, with the just uh, face value, we like uh, we try to judge them and we uh, accredit them, or we can we say that we acknowledge their service to society by providing them uh, bronze, silver, gold, or platinum award. So I would definitely request you all to join GSFN. I will put the links later on, 
And uh, also, uh, uh, I'm. Uh, let me go through this, uh, that today we have, as I mentioned, uh, here I have written 6,000. So again, this poster is a uh, bit uh, older. We have 7,000 already now, and we are linked at uh, several uh, uh, social media. And we have been able to deliver more than 1,000 hours of online videos and uh, media posts. And we have also carried out few um successful research projects and so on. So uh, this is how we want to continue to build the society and develop their capacity for sustainable development. So now coming to the real uh, topic of today, I would like to say that we know most of us now we are aware that climate change is going on, but it has significant impact on agriculture, forestry and food industry. And this impact is going to change over time. It is not like what we uh, identify today is not going to be remaining the same. It could have plenty, of, there, is pl there are plenty of uncertainties and we are not able to predict the change. However, uh, also the change in local and global climate conditions will impact the life cycle process of agriculture and food industry, including the quality of seeds, growing seasons, and crop maturity, livestock uh, productivity, forest productivity, and so on. And the most critical impact are the increased CO2 emissions due to the growth in agriculture activities. And these carbon emissions are very, very important to be considered. And I'm sure Liz is going to dwell into it uh, just after my presentation, and she is going to explain you more why we must be considering carbon in agriculture, like we, why we should be worried about carbon in agriculture and how we can manage that. As the change, it also like we have plenty of impact uh, threatening uh, out, uh, you know, outputs because of this climate change, just as changing rainfall pattern, increased evaporation demand, Reducing uh, reduced water availability for irrigation and, and uh, a repeated period of droughts, uh, tree deaths, increased flooding, including uh, sea rise, uh, uh, sea level rise, and substantial loss to the crop production and in, uh, in low lying agriculture areas then compaction, uh, water logging, and many other uh, soil erosion. So many other things can happen due to this climate change and the extreme pattern and the difference uh, like changing rainfall patterns. And I know that Pakistan is not new to these things. You have been experiencing these changes since last uh, few years. And uh, specifically in last year, you have seen that uh, uh, highly impacting the society and the agriculture uh, industry. So climate change is going to affect the range and the quality of our ecosystem services that agriculture and forestry provide and rely on. And it, how though they can provide this climate control, flood regulation, biodiversity, pollination and nutrition cycle and so on, we need to really understand the critical role of adopting the change by introducing new healthy and systematic, you know, uh, uh, change, which would include like what type of genotypes might we, we require, what type of varieties might we require, what type of management practices we require, and so on. We need to dwell into it and see that. And as the impact of climate change continues to be severe, there is also need for more adaptation measures. And agriculture and forestry are the components. They are the larger, big biophysical and social and economic system. And they can adapt, they can react and adapt to the climate change. They have that possibilities. They have that potential. And therefore, how we should then tap into those potentials, that is what we want to understand as well. So, at the at the same time, uh, you know, having uh, uh, dealing with climate change, agriculture has other demands as well. Agriculture and food industry. 
such as you know the population is growing and therefore the demand is growing including we want to achieve our sdg number two that is no hunger we also want to have a uh, safe and nutritious food for everyone we also want to diminish the or like uh, eliminate all the forms of malnutrition and therefore we need to double the productivity and income of this uh, you know uh, pro like productivity of the agriculture and that would e impact on the income and the livelihood of the small scale food producers sustainable food production and resilient agriculture practices and so on and we also need to maintain genetic uh, diversity in food production so that we can invest uh, in you know uh, this uh, uh, industry we also need to invest in rural uh, infrastructure so that we can understand how we can uh, have that potential of agriculture over there as well we also need to understand you know what are the trade restrictions or what is the market distinctions or what what uh, are the export subsidies and so on to uh, understand our global uh, environment around us so there are plenty of things and there are plenty of complex connections between each other uh, of this whole uh, supply chain. I won't say uh, just a supply chain, but it is a, it is a whole landscape of agriculture and food industry, which we need to understand and tap into its uh, connections or relationships. And thus, I would say achieving food and nutrition security by increasing crop productivity, while limiting carbon emissions is one of the most utmost uh, you know priority for any nation today we have to become uh, we have to strengthen our uh, agri food values chain scaling up to agri food system re re resilience improving food security and generating employment and therefore we need to be future ready and we must have those innovative practices. We must be more creative, experimental. We should be able to understand the future scenarios, be prepared to be resilient and uh, for these climatic as well as economic shocks. So how we can do that? And therefore we are going to bring communities carbon calculator which would be an uh, eco-friendly, cleaner consumption and production system, and that would be more productive, profitable, resourceful, resource efficient, and uh, I mean into including the water and energy and other uh, aspects related to ag agriculture farming, and also it should be environmental friendly. It should be balanced to gender equality in there, accessible to everyone, inclusive of everyone, and resilient. So how we can do that? What we are going to do, we are going to adopt farm carbon calculator, which would be more explained by, again, I said, Liz, and uh, that is for UK carbon calculator. It is uh, based on the UK context. We want to adopt that model to be, be, make a bespoke carbon calculator for Pakistan. And we want each of every one of you to be get involved in it because food is something where directly or indirectly we are all involved in it. So we want to work from the farm to the fork or, or you can say uh, even beyond that, uh, we want to understand the whole relationship and how we can make it more resilient. So the primary concept of these, uh, what we have thought that there are four primary concepts in, within this whole range of uh, activities that we propose or uh, the project we propose, that one is carbon budgeting. So e each and every activity of today's lifestyle can be measured in carbon emission. And if we know the measurement, then we can budget it. Anything that we know the measurement we can budget. So that is what we want to say, carbon budgeting, that inc it includes again carbon reduction or using embodied carbon or reducing carbon waste for positive impact. 
Then we want to uh, implement carbon mobilization. So if we understand where we need to reduce carbon or where we want to, uh, where we are emitting high carbon, uh, like more carbon, then we can understand that where we can play with this carbon dynamics. And throughout the processes, practices, and also the, you know, the whole supply chain. And therefore, we can take the use of technologies, best practices to do that. And therefore, uh, it will be possible only if we measure and then uh, implement best practices, we will be able to mobilize the carbon. And that can also give rise to carbon trading market because we know that where is uh, where the carbon is going from one place to another, where it is stored or where it is emitted, and that can give rise to the carbon trading market as well. Then we we must third concept we have is carbon literacy. You, me, and everyone today needs to be carbon literate, and it includes like increasing the understanding and the knowledge of the use of the technologies or the theories or the practices that allow us to understand that how we can become a low and resilient carbon uh, actor. So that is where we want to go. And the, finally, I would say there is a concept of carbon sustainability within this, which is like, of course, we know that we have to live within 1.5 scenario today for carbon, uh, for not getting into the uh, severe, severe troubles that climate change is going to bring, we have to be within carbon sustainability. And so these four concepts will be uh, silently driving our uh, this um, project. And so what we mean by country carbon calculator or what, what benefits will it bring? It will allow us to identify and connect relevant stakeholders it may be physically, socially, or virtually, both at local, national, and also regional level. And we will be able to advocate, encourage, and negotiate between the stakeholders to get involved in this program for managing carbon emission, businesses, and innovative commodities, adopting an integrated approach and multi-agreement, um, multi-area agreements. We will be able to create national, uh, local, and regional forums to attract the uh, stakeholders, including startups, technicians, experts associated with the business. And we will be able to facilitate this carbon calculator, which will be developed in country, partnering with the subject matter experts, academia, technology experts, and the most important uh, is community. And the carbon calculator will be an online tool, which can also be maybe able to, uh, we will be able to make offline as well. Possibility is there that we have an uh, app which can be worked as offline and that can be stored, uh, that can be used to store your one year data. And then whenever you go online, you can upload that and so on. So it will work offline and online, and it will enable each and every business manager, I call the small scale industry or small farmer also a business manager because it is, they are having a small business and they are doing. So I, I would say that each, every business manager will be able to calculate their carbon emissions and understand what are the best practices to lower down and uh, make it more uh, you know, uh, positive impact for the society or the environment. And it can also account all type of agriculture, food uh, production and land use, producing a carbon balance, detailing, you know, emissions into scope one, two, and three emissions and carbon storage as well, as I mentioned. And the noticeable difference will be reflected at the end of that uh, carbon emission when we uh, do one year um, um, calculations and then we evaluate them and then input the best practices and carry on all those things for two or three years, 
you will be definitely be able to understand the quality of services, commercialization, and uh, you know, plenty of other things will also play a role like certification, carbon credits, carbon diversity, inclusion of armor, women, young people, and so on. And this is a scalable and innovative approach to connecting the countries as low carbon, resilient, and sustainable environmental agriculture and food suppliers health and manufacturing, etc. So this is what we want to bring to the table as a uh, community's carbon calculator from GSFN. We will be working with uh, Nazir uh, and other partners in uh, to develop this and we will invite you all to be a part of it. And so therefore I would say thank you very much for listening to me and I always believe we all together can swing high in the sky beyond this network. And thank you for listening me here. Thank you. So I will stop uh, sharing. And uh, thank you, everyone. I will uh, now close my video. Thank you.